minefields were important components of defensive positions. With the help of these barriers, the troops could protect themselves from the enemy's attack or at the very least delay their advance. The growth of the role of the mines in the war led to the emergence of special devices in the German army intended for making passes in those barriers. It would have allowed the troops not to waste time on demining and not lose the pace of the offensive. The first special vehicle was the Reumer S. It was a super heavy mine clearance vehicle developed by the Krupp company, which never got beyond the prototype stage and was never even tested. According to the concept, the heavy weight of the vehicle should detonate all the anti-tank mines. As early as September of 1940, the weapons office placed an order to develop a device for mechanically clearing mines on the road and in the field, even during combat. The vehicle should be self-propelled, armored and equipped with rollers, which should clear an alley 3 meters wide. The vehicle weighed 130 tons. The model consisted of two halves that were connected to one another by pins and hydraulic cylinders. This also made it possible to steer the vehicle. Each half of the vehicle could be turned 22 degrees for a total of 44 degrees. Since the turning circle would still have been huge, the option for two diverse positions for driving forwards and backwards was chosen. The high steel wheels had good suspension as they could jump up to half a meter high during mine explosions or fall into mine craters up to 100 centimeter deep. The ground clearance was between 1 meter and 2 meters. The thickness of the armor plates of the superstructure was only 25 millimeters. The vehicle, including the driver, had a crew of 8, all of whom had hydraulically suspended seats. In June of 1943, the weapons testing office was shown the individual parts of the Reumer. In August of 1944, the vehicle was presented again with the stipulation that it should be completed by September the same year. In October, however, Krupp announced that the vehicle was not yet ready due to further problems, but that it would now be completed by November of that year. Tests should be then take place in the Kummersdorf test site near Berlin. When the US Army marched into the test site in 1945, they found the model vehicle there. It was examined and brought to the Americans depot near Paris for testing. The vehicle was cut into two halves for transport, then its track is lost. The American reports doubt that the vehicle was really intended for clearing mines as it only had 53 cm wide wheels. It was assumed that it should have been only the towing vehicle for a special clearing device. The next bizarre armored minesweeper was the Versuch Kraftfahrzeug 617. Versuch Kraftfahrzeug means test vehicle. Built in the Alcat factory near Berlin, it was heavily armored and designed to detonate mines again by simply rolling over them. The three-wheeled vehicle's wide track was designed to clear a mine-free path for other vehicles. The hull of the vehicle was covered in variable shielding between 10 to 40 mm with a floor shielding of 40 mm designed to resist the explosion of multiple mines. The floor itself was reinforced by additional shielding of 20 mm inside the machine for another added protection. The first prototype was completed in 1942. 
The superstructure possesses a turret of the Panzer I tank, which is equipped with two MG-34 machine guns, ensuring a close defense of the machine. But the production version would have a Panzer II turret with a single 20mm cannon and one MG-34 machine gun. During these ground displacements, the changes of direction were accomplished by orientation of an aft wheel controlled by a system of chains actuated by a wheel. The mobility of the machine was ensured by two enormous discs on which heavy mobile shoes were fixed which were theoretically resistant to the explosions of all mines. The principal role of the vehicle was the detonation of mines to obtain a clear access path for German infantry and armored fighting vehicles. This was to be achieved by the exercise of a very strong ground pressure using the shoes with permanent ground contact. During the trial tests it proved that this vehicle was unsuited to the operations of modern mechanized warfare. Its weight, slow speed and its awkward size made the minesweeper a large and slow target for enemy artillery and the project was thus abandoned. The sole prototype was captured by the Red Army in late April of 1945. The vehicle was inspected and tested in Kubinka near Moscow. It was preserved and is currently on display in the Kubinka Tank Museum.